All right. Put that on the side. There you go. Jailbreak horses. Behind, 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 but catching up. Almost got the interior of this barn done. The stalls are almost done. The stall walls up. First cake up, put up. Can't wait to get this place done up for these horses to have a nice, cozy winter bedrooms. But anyway, I got a lot to talk about. But I'm gonna talk, do a lot of talk about some other items later on. I got some important emails I gotta get out. I got some important voices that need to be heard. Everybody's important. And uh, I rarely read emails before I read them to you guys, obviously. But I caught this one the other day because I was going through my notes, seeing if I'd missed any because I'll hit, when I get the notes, I'll put red in front and then it, it puts everything in a list, but sometimes I miss some. So I'm scrolling back, scrolling back, found one that was hidden. And I want you guys to listen to this one right now, right? Before I get my day going here. Hey, Steve, your channel rocks. I sent a, a couple other emails to you, but this one comes from a very special person who asked me to share this with all the table. Can't use his or my name due to the sensitivity of our relationship. I'm a direct care provider to three develop, developmentally different guys, which is the PC way of saying mentally disabled. I was watching one of your videos late at night while at work when one of my guys came out of his room to rock a piss. On his way back to bed, he asked what I was watching, to which I replied, stories of Sasquatch encounters. He didn't seem interested and went back to his room. A few minutes later, he came back out and sat down at the table and looked at me dead in the eye and said, do you want to hear a real werewolf story? And all the hair on my body stood on end. He began to tell me about a YMCA campground that he used to attend every summer at a lake called Mystic Lake that is located in the central Michigan area. One night, right before lights out, something crashed down on the roof of the cabin and rolled down the roof and onto the ground. The counselor said that someone threw a campfire log up on the roof to scare them. But if you're working at this camp, you know that something like that can damage these guys for life, and you just don't do shit like that. So we calmed them down and looked outside to find a very large rock, way too big for anyone to throw on a roof. I asked him how he knew it was a rock. It was a rock, and my guy replied, just let me finish. He went on with that after, he went on with, after that, there was a pounding on the one wall that started on the wall but moved up to the roof. He told me that everyone in the cabin is now crying and scared. The pounding continued for a few seconds and stopped and then said he didn't know why, but he jumped up and looked out the window and thought he saw a tall, wide man walking away into the woods. The other counselors and workers showed up at the cabin due to the screaming and crying. They asked what the heck happened, and he told me that the counselor wouldn't say a word. The rest of the staff went outside with flashlights to take a look. My guy said he was watching out the window when one of the female counselors went by the window and shined her light into the woods, and there it was. He said his face looked like a dog's, and it was about six feet tall, and, and it turned and ran. She screamed and ran to the cabin and the rest of the staff followed. He went on to tell me that all three cabins worth the campers and counselors and staff brought their mattresses into the one cabin that night. He then told me that when they were moving in, he, he then told me that when they were moving in, he saw the large rock out front of the cabin that had never been there before. In the morning, all the parents and guardians were called to come get the kids a day early. He also said that a guy from Lansing, to which I assume was a guy from the head of the YMCA, showed up and he and the counselor that was in the cabin were looking at the big rock and my guy heard him say, look at this, and showed the counselor a picture to which he nodded. Now I believe that this young man is telling the truth because while I tell this story, he would have to stop and calm down and try not to get upset. And the next day he called his mother and while on speaker, he asked if she remembered the story and she said, now son, don't tell anyone that story. They might think you're a delusional. He is not. Thanks, Steve. Sorry for the lack of punctuation. And if you ever get to this story at the end, could you say hey to MK? It would make his year. You're one of the coolest guys in the world in his eyes and I think you're a great person myself. Oh man, thanks for those kind words. MK. As far as I'm concerned, every single person that comes forward with truth is the coolest group of people on the face of the planet today, and you can't take that away from them. They own the coolest people of the world position today. And that includes you, MK, all right? 
So uh, thanks for coming forward with your knowledge. The world absolutely appreciates it. All right? The world appreciates your honesty and your courage. And uh, that's what makes this place such a great place and makes it better. Every single person that shares here makes this place better. All right? And uh, you're one of many, many people here today. Over 4 million views in the last few weeks just on this one channel. It's a lot of curious minds, a lot of people watching, and it also fills the inboxes up with many, many, many emails, right? Which is a good thing. It can get confusing, it can be time taxing, but I don't give a shit. As far as I'm concerned, every single person's voice today is, sh is the most important thing going on today. As far as I'm concerned, every single person's voice should today, especially today, should be the most important thing that we watch and listen to today, is each other and nobody else. And uh, on that note, I will tell you one thing, I was, guys, I was thinking about the other day was, you know, there's, a lot, there's always been a lot of movements, a lot of causes going on in the world, and a lot of people manage to get everybody organized to do something and make a statement for a day or two, whether it be turning lights out or turning lights on. You know, for when the people in the space station example were floating by, I think a bunch of people organized the lights out or lights on, something happened there, or maybe it was something about saving power, whatever, I'm babbling. What I'm saying is, um, anyway, would it be great to one day possibly organize all of us, every single one of us, pick a date, and basically spank, give mainstream media news a spanking, and one they can't ignore? I think I would love to do that. I would love to try to organize a day, a day and a month, maybe even a couple of days, turn it into a week and maybe possibly turning it, turning it into a, a long-term thing. And that would be to blank out mainstream news outlets and make their views go down to record lows for a day or two days and make a statement from us, the people, make, it, make them make them realize and have to swallow that we are the strongest power on the face of the earth today and we command respect and we command truth and honesty. Wouldn't that be great? I think we should do it. You know, obviously I can't do it by myself, but I can start it. it, would have, it the only way it would be, we would be able to do that would be if we organized a lot of good, strong, honest people who have substantial followings or reach and pick a day and go for it and give mainstream news fraud, those fraudulent sleazy bastards the spanking of their life and hopefully keep that spank going until they either smarten up or, they, we, or we just annihilate them and, and erase them altogether like we should have a long time ago, right? As far as I'm concerned, the lies, the manipulation, the deceit, the de it's, it's, it's a very serious, very serious cancer in our communities today easily proven. So we have to do something about it. We have to. Nobody else is going to. It's out of control. And I think I strongly believe that we can take it back. Anyway, chew on that thought for a little bit and um, talk about it with your friends and let's see if we can do that. I think that'd be really cool. All right, this is titled Believer. Hello, Steve. Thanks for taking on this challenge and creating a platform for folks to share the enigma they experienced. Without boring everyone of details of my life, I'll get right to it. Like yourself, I'm an avid hunter, have been since I was six. I probably hiked every mountain there is in Colorado and most in Arizona. I've always been keen to animal behavior and the direction they run when they spooked. Having said that, I've never been skunked on a hunt. The big boys are up on top and I go where most hunters won't. I've heard you read about the moments when the forest goes quiet and the overwhelming feeling of being stalked. Three separate times I've had this happen while hunting. I love the feeling of outsmarting a game animal in their environment, but going from predator to prey is much fun. The last time I had this happen was opening day of elk season up in the Woodland Park area. Three feet of snow fell overnight, but even so, I was in my area I scouted pre-season by early light. Unloaded the 800 Polaris and drove down into a deep dark canyon. The snow silenced the quad, but it was so deep I got off and walked. I came across a herd of elk tracks. In fact, my tracks and theirs were the only tracks. I began to follow the three-hour-old tracks, hoping they were bedded down. Then, I had this feeling that I was being stalked. I felt maybe a big cat was watching me from up in the trees. So, in one hand, my rifle, the other, my 44 mag, I made my way back. 
Before I got to my four-wheeler, I noticed my tracks were now covered by huge blowouts. I was trying to be quiet walking in, but these looked as if someone had been running with snowshoes on, but using my snow path. I'm six foot three and was high stepping intentionally not to burn my legs out in three feet of snow. I looked back to see what my tracks looked like and nope, I didn't look like this. I'm now in panic mode because these two, this two-legged animal that appeared to be going my same direction using my tracks has suddenly stopped making tracks and in my mind must be close, vanished. My other two were similar, my other two experiences I'm guessing, but one involved a very large pile of steamy shit I came upon hunting deer. Anyways, I've never seen or heard one that I know of, but didn't cross my mind while hunting. Let me say it again. Anyways, I've never seen or heard one that I know of, but didn't cross my mind while hunting. I'm still a believer. Way too many people out there for this to be a hoax. And for the scoffers, I say, I've hiked an entire state's worth of walking probably twice, and not once did I come across a bear carcass or a set of antlers that weren't attached to the animal I harvested. A set of antlers, that's odd. Yeah, we know they exist. Anyways, thanks again, love what you do. You're truly a blessed man to have a family and live that life where you do. Sincerely, stuck in California. P.S. Included still shots of a video I found. Have you seen it? This thing has got to be 9 to 10 feet. Take care. All right, I'll include those. I don't know who, whose they are, and no, I've never seen it. But I'm actually at home, so I'll be able to use the computer and add these into it, all right? Looks pretty big. From here, I can't tell on this small screen, but interesting, interesting to say the least. And just so you guys know, the elk, the elk hunting and elk hunter thing, you might want to watch Missing 401 The Hunted. You want to want, listen to David Plattis, and he has a lot to share about these sightings of these beings and elk and elk hunters. It goes hand in hand way more often than we actually realize, right? Okay, I got one more short one here. I'm going to get ripped out, <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and I'll be back shortly again. Railroad sightings. Oh, I think I already read this. Oh, maybe not. Steve, please, could you do a call out of sorts? I'm interested in seeing if a theory of mine is, has any validity. Back in the 80s, my brother had an encounter while walking the railroad tracks in order to aggress an old overground orchard from downwind. So I began thinking about how our railroads cut through our planet. They're off the beaten path and something most of us pay little attention to. In fact, that creature's with a brain will walk the path of least resistance to get to where they're going. I have a theory that many of these beings use these as a super highway of sorts to get to new territories or whatever they are wanting to do. It'd be interesting to do a call out to see if there are any railroad worker types that needed to, to vent. Surely there must be some of those folks who have some information and knowledge to share. I have no doubt the Sasquatch has figured out that a train is easily avoided and gives plenty of warning of its approach. I just wonder how many times they've been spotted by railroad engineer folks or how often they play chicken while traversing the steel rails. I hope you have the time to read this and give it some thought. I see this as an area where we can learn a lot about their behaviors if my theory is correct. Uh, that email sounded pretty familiar. I think we either, I either read that one already or somebody sent one in real similar previous. And uh, we have had a lot of rail workers email us in and obviously rail, rail workers see it all, man. They see it all. And uh, they have seen a lot and um, have had a lot of, I did give that shout out, I think earlier this year and a substantial amount of rail workers emailed us back in, okay? Uh, possibly do a search on that. I know that my videos aren't labeled so you can easily find them. I probably should be doing that, but whatever. Sorry, maybe I'll try it. I'll do that soon, you guys. I mean, even starting with this one, who knows? But I'd have to go back through all the videos, shares and relabel them from one and number them present. But anyway, um, I will send that shout out again to rail workers because there's, I think there's 5,000 new subscribers here just in the last few weeks, 4 million views this month, less than a month in climbing. So there's a lot of new people here and a lot of those people might be rail workers that haven't heard the shout out previously. So we'll send it out again. As far as traveling the path of least resistance, that goes, that goes with everyone, everything, but not everyone, everything can vanish or have their tracks vanish. Just that fact alone, 
tends to allow me to think that these things don't need the the path of least resistance doesn't doesn't have much of an effect on someone whose tracks can absolutely vanish at any given time, right? A little bit to wrap your noggin around, but you can't ignore it, it's a fact. Tracks have been vanishing. Hundreds of people have noted these things vanishing or hiding behind a tree and disappearing behind a tree that is not big enough to hide the frame. So anyway, but it's good to get those questions out. It's good It's good to see you and, and everybody else thinking and trying to figure this shit out, right? Anyway, I gotta get going. I gotta get going to work back here. And uh, and I gotta get more shares out. And I gotta, and I gotta, and I gotta, and I gotta. <laughs> and the list goes on. But I'll be back shortly, alright?